Mrs. Lane. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. A lot of time um, simply contemplating the world. There'll be um, little or no sickness because people have the ability to um, do faith healing. Hmm. And when people uh, are to the point in their lives where they felt that they've developed spiritually enough and want to move on to the next level um, and feel like their um, time here is done, um, there'll be a great party. And um, they'll do a thing that we call dying, but in their world, they'll call it being born. Wow. So, okay, so basically people became master manifestors. Like they can manifest things instantly almost, right? Yes. Everybody. Okay. What were you told about uh, the power of thought? Um, it was a big surprise to me because Jesus told me that thought is very powerful and that we need to master our thoughts and to use our thoughts for powerful ways. Like, for example, um, I think almost every guy knows this. I don't know about, I've never talked to women about it, but I've talked to men about it. It's like, if you're a guy and like you're sitting in a restaurant or a bar or whatever, or a classroom and you start lusting after a woman, like she turns and looks at you like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, <laughs> they, they know, I don't know how they know, but they know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's weird. Um, so, I mean, in, in our own little lives, as primitive as they are, there is telep telepathic communication, and we are all aware of it to some degree. But Jesus told me that if we think in loving and constructive ways as opposed to um, destructive ways, um, we create that kind of energy around us. So basically, Jesus was telling me, to make it simple, as we project love from us, we will receive love in return. As we right. project anger, cruelty, greed, hatred, we will receive those things back in return. So you reap what you sow, basically, yep. right? Yep. Universal laws, awesome. basically. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So what was the most beautiful place you saw during your NDE? Um. I asked Jesus about heaven, and so um, I got a tour. And I don't know whether, I mean, I, I don't know whether we went to heaven or he just showed me these very realistic three-dimensional images of heaven. I can't, I, I, there's no way for me to know which way it was. But anyways, heaven was so beautiful because everything that's good and everything that ever has been made in this world and all the other worlds and everything that ever was and will be is all in heaven. So heaven is like... Um, the ultimate playground and there's no um, sadness. There's no pain. There's no cruelty. There's no competitiveness. It's just all um, joy and delight. And the most beautiful part of heaven is the centerpiece, which is where God is, where the um, people have, have graduated spiritually to the ultimate degree participate in what, um, is often called to the heavenly choir, but I like to, Jesus talked a bit more about um, God's symphony because we're all God's instrument. Each one of us is an instrument, a unique instrument of, um, that we are self-created instruments. We're not yeah. self-created beings. We're self-created instruments. Our, our lives shape the instrument that we become. And when we go into the great symphony orchestra around God, we get to participate in the act of creation because one of the things that Jesus told me that's very different than um, what people think is that creation is this ongoing thing. And if the um, this great creative chorus were to ever go silent for a moment, everything that is would cease to be. There, there would be no thing of no thing. Um, but so they literally we are what we are is we are the song of the great creator, God, and all the creators who have joined their will with God's will. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, so do you believe that the Earth is the only place to grow spiritually, or is there other dimensions and universes where we can grow and learn? No, I asked Jesus about that, and he told me that there was um, lots of other worlds, and um, he even showed me images of the beings in those other worlds, and then I asked him where we ranked in terms of the other worlds, and I said, are we like kind of elementary school or something? And he said, oh, no, much lower than that. And I said, lower than elementary school? And I said, like kindergarten? And he said, no, lower than kindergarten. And I said, huh. the only thing lower than kindergarten is nursery school. And he said, yeah, you're, the earth is just barely nursery school. And so one of the things that if we want to, when we go to heaven, if we want to experience life in the physical plane, as opposed to the spiritual plane in another world that's much more advanced. We can do that too. Okay. So is there intelligent life in the universe? Oh yeah. It's loaded. It's full. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, what did you see? Well, he paraded intelligent beings before me in a parade. And they started off as human-like beings. And then as the parade went on, they started, their features started to become a little bit different and strange. And then they became distinctly unhuman looking at all. And it was starting to get a little bit disturbing because there was like a lot of information going before me. And they're all waving at me and smiling at me and greeting me and stuff. And like, it's all very weird. And um, I finally said, okay, I get the idea. <laughs> I don't need to see anymore because it was like, you know, when these sort of undersea creature things are like looking at you and talking to you and stuff, you're sort of going like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't see creatures and stuff well, like that. They look like they weren't sea creatures, but they look like things from the ocean depths and stuff, you know. Really? Yeah. Okay. So what did you learn about the spiritual laws of cause and effect? Um. The interesting thing is, is it's really um, pretty immediate. Like if we, we're putting out negative thoughts, negative energy, that is exactly the world that we're going to experience. Right. And if we put out positive energy, po loving energy and thoughts, that comes back. And the, and the thing that I feel badly about is that so many people in the world living miserable lives. I mean, not a lot of people say they're really happy. And being connected with God and doing my best to be a loving person, I am generally very, very happy and meet a lot of good, loving people all the time. And I have like a blessed life. I mean, it's like good stuff happens to me all the time. Right. And if I told you all the good things that happened to me, you'd say either I was delusional, which I'm not, or you'd say I'm bragging. And I'm not that either. It's just that um, when when you put out love and good energy, it just comes back to you in all kinds of surprising and wonderful ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, that's what we preach here at You Are Creators, um, positive energy, love, mm -hmm. you know, um, I believe that people create a state of hell for themselves here. Yeah. Or they can create a state of heaven for themselves. Absolutely. Based on their actions, their words, and their deeds. And, you know, yeah. I, so, I completely agree. So, okay. So, does God actually give us rules? What do you think about that? No. No. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I believe that... Um, God gives us guidance, like don't play in the traffic, don't eat poison mushrooms. But <laughs> the, the interesting right. thing about the big rule, love one another, Jesus, that was Jesus' big final commandment, love one another. That simple. Right. Um, it's the simplest thing in the world, and it's the hardest thing in the world. I thought after my experience, it would be so easy to come back and be a loving person. 
And I am still working on trying to be the loving person that um, I know he wants me to be. And I fail all the time. And I don't do as good a job as I know I should. But the good thing is I'm doing the best that I can. And I know that it makes him, it pleases him that I'm doing the best that I can. And so it's as bad a job as I do, or as good a job as I do, whatever, he knows that I'm, I'm giving it my best shot. And um, as far as he's concerned, I know as far as he's concerned, that's good enough. Okay, so you had a negative indie at first. Um, so is there a hell, and if so, who goes there? And is it permanent? Well, um, let me take the second part first. I don't know what ultimately happens to people in hell. There's lots of theories. Okay. Um, you know, some people say that ultimately there's annihilation. Some people say, um, like C.S. Lewis um, describes, devolution into lower and lower and lower states where, where it ends. Who knows? Some people think that there's redemption from hell. Like, for example, in the um, Orthodox Church, they believe that you can pray people out of hell and, re- and, and, and bring them out of hell into heaven. Um, I don't know what happens. I, I know that God is good. I know that God hates hell. I know that God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. And the people that go to hell went there because they rejected God. And by rejecting God, I'm not talking about rejecting religion. I'm talking about rejecting the goodness and the love. Um, and so they go into this uh, place that has many experiences. Um, I know that Jesus went to hell, and he preached there. And a lot of people, um, when he went to the people that were in hell, when he preached to them, a lot of people said, yeah, I'm really tired of this place. I want out. We're coming with you. And he said, come on, let's get out of here. Uh-huh. Um, that's in the Bible. And most Christians don't know that for some reason. It's really weird. Right. They don't know that. But that is in the Bible. And uh, Epistle to Peter. It's also in the uh, Apostles' Creed. Anyways, um, so if Jesus did that at one time for the people in hell, I don't see why he wouldn't do it again. So you called on Jesus. Yeah. And he got you. So what if someone else in this hellish realm calls on Jesus? I mean, will he rescue them as well? Well, let me answer it this way. Um, the Bible says in three different places, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so... I would assume that that means exactly what it says. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, no matter who they are, where they are, what they're doing. The problem problem is not whether Jesus would save someone from hell. The problem is they get so beyond wanting to be saved that they won't even do it. You know, it's like um, people that are caught up into addiction. You know, you want to go up to people and say, you know, if you stop drinking, if you stop taking um, meth, if you stop taking heroin, you know, it would really help you out a lot. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, find your own business. I mean, why do people get stuck in these in these negative behaviors? I mean, you know, that stuff's poison. And they're killing themselves. And they know it. Everybody knows it. It's no secret. Yet they do it. And why don't they stop? Why why do, why do people go to help? They, they go there because that's what they want. So they create it, you think? They create or Oh, yeah. Or, it's, it's, okay. They create it for themselves, basically. Yeah. God doesn't, okay. God doesn't punish people. He gives everybody what they secretly want in their hearts. Want. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Totally agree with that. Totally. Okay. So what if someone – okay. What if someone believes in Buddha? I mean, I mean, like, can they make it to heaven? Make you know, you know, believing um, in Buddha? What do you think about that? I think that there's a lot.